Hi everybody, my name is Stephanie. Welcome to my channel. Today I am making an adorable cake. It's Baby Jack-Jack from the new Incredibles 2 movie. In this video, I'm going to take you through the entire making of this cake, from the building of the structure all the way to the airbrushing at the end. We have a ton of work to get to, so let's get started. Okay, large 3D cakes like this always start with a cake support structure. I went ahead and built mine without the cake so you can see exactly what it looks like. It's crazy that this is going to turn into a baby, but it actually does and it's pretty sturdy. And as you can see, each board is supported by a nut and a washer. You'll need a nut and a washer above and below each board. I did forget to put the arms on at this part, so this is where they're going to go, right there. And I'll put them in between two nuts to hold the arms into place. All right, now I'm going to take it all apart and rebuild it with the cake. This is a 15 inch square piece of MDF that I already decorated with fondant and it's completely dry. On the bottom of my board, I have some extra thick felt pads that I'll use for feet. I doubled up on them, so actually I used eight felt pads. I've drilled a hole into my board. The hole is the same width as my center threaded rod. And here's my center threaded rod. It's 3 8 inch thick and I've cut it to about 15 inches tall using my bolt cutters. I've got a nut and a washer already screwed onto the end of the rod. I'm pushing my threaded rod through the bottom of my board and then I slide down one of my washers, then a lock washer, and then a nut. Just get that on there nice and tight and then you'll need two wrenches for this part. You'll first hold the bottom with one wrench while tightening the other side with the other wrench. It's really important to get this as tight as possible so the structure stays secure. Next I'm covering the nut and washer on my board. I'm also covering the first four inches of my threaded rod. All right, let's move on to the cake now. These are six inch chocolate chip cakes that I'm using for the body. I'm layering them with chocolate ganache and I continue layering until the cakes are about four inches tall. I've heard that baby Jack Jack likes to eat chocolate chip cookies, so that is why I went with chocolate chip cake today. But what's most important is that you need to use a very sturdy cake recipe. I next need to add another nut and washer. And then I'm adding my next board. And then I'll need another washer and a nut. and I use my wrench to get it on there as tight as I can. I cover my threaded rod again up another four inches and then I add four more inches of cake and ganache. Now it's time to add the arm support. First I'll add another nut, then my six gauge armature wire, and then another nut. I bent my wire to make a loop so that it will slide down the center of the rod too. I've also covered my wire in more foil tape. Get your wrench back out and make sure it's really tight so the arms stay into place. All right, let's carve the cake. The carving is pretty easy here. You'll just want to round out the top of the body and you'll want to just take off a little bit at a time. I'm going to go ahead and add the legs next. I have some extra cake here that I'm going to cut into the shape using my serrated knife and a circle cutter. My cake is halfway frozen right now, so it's hard to cut through it, but it's something that I suggest you do too, because it's so much easier to work with a cold cake. I'm trimming down my legs, rounding out the edges here, and attaching them to the cake with a little bit more ganache. I then thought my legs were a little bit too skinny, so I added more cake and trimmed down the edges too. Okay, onto the feet. I'm using my large circle cutter to cut out a round piece of cake and then I cut away some of the cake from the sides. I check to see if it's the right size and then I attach it to the cake with ganache. I wanted to give it a little cute detail on the back so I'm cutting away a little bit of the cake here on the back side. This is going to be so cute. I wanted to show you another way to cover the metal support structure and this is a little bit of candy melts that I melted and I'm just brushing it on. I like this way too, it worked pretty well. Once that was dry, I cut another round circle of cake for the neck. It wanted to break apart on me, but I got it to stay by pressing it down firmly. Cake pot filling would be really good for this spot like this too. After I've got the neck into place, I need another nut and washer. My board, another nut and washer. I cover all of the metal with foil tape or chocolate, and then I begin my next layers of cake. I really should have made my board a little bit bigger here because the cake was hanging off the edge. 
I was really worried about it, but it worked out fine since I was using such a sturdy cake recipe. Next, I'm repeating the process of adding nuts, washers, and my board, and then I add the rest of my cake. Okay, all my cake is added finally. The head is way too big, so I begin carving it down to size. I printed out an image of Jack-Jack's head to use as a guide for cutting. I decided to make his chin a little larger, so I used some of my cake scraps and I attached them to the chin with ganache. I think using cake pop filling would have been better, but it worked completely fine and I trimmed it down to size. Problem solved. Now I begin covering the entire cake in chocolate ganache. After I've got it covered, I get my template back out and I mark where the eyes and mouth are. I use a sharp knife to cut away the cake in those areas. I really cut away too much in the eyes, I didn't really need to do that, but oh well. Now to smooth out my chocolate ganache, I'm using a piece of acetate. This is one I got on Amazon from Innovative Sugar Works. I love the way it smooths out the ganache and buttercream around curved areas. Okay, after I've smoothed it out, I thought the cheeks weren't chubby enough. Babies have chubby cheeks. So I made some cake pop filling with some leftover chocolate cake I had in the freezer, and I added some chubby cheeks. And then I cover the cheeks in more chocolate ganache. All right, moving on to the arms. I'm making the arms out of rice cereal treats, so to get them to stick to my armature wire, I'm first brushing it with melted marshmallows. Then I'm molding some rice cereal treats around the wire to form the arm. To make the arms more smooth, I like to cover them in modeling chocolate and then I smooth it out with the, my piece of acetate. Some people cover it with ganache here and that works too. It's time to cover this baby's massive head. Since his head is so big, I need to do it in two pieces. I've mixed together half modeling chocolate and half fondant to cover the head so that I can smooth out the seams easier. I'm spraying the body with water to get my fondant mixture to stick to it. I roll out my fondant mixture, drape it over my rolling pin and place it onto the cake. Using my hands, I'm pressing the fondant mixture down onto the cake and I cut away the excess with my X-Acto knife. To smooth it out, I use my fondant smoother. And then I repeat the same process to cover the back of the head. I cut away the excess and I smooth out the seams using the heat from my hands. My cake was looking really creepy at this point, so I wanted to get some of his face details on it to make sure he looked right. For the eyes, I'm using another template. I rolled up my fondant and used my template to cut out the whites of the eyes to the proper shape. I then used different piping tips to cut out the blue and black parts of the eyes. Here I'm attaching the pupils to the blue iris of the eyes and then I'm going to hand paint some of the details. First, I'm painting around the edge of the eye with dark blue. The paint is food coloring gel mixed with a drop of vodka. Then I begin painting small dark blue lines with my brush. After I painted all the way around the eye, I dip my brush into the vodka and use a lighter shade of blue to paint around it again. It turned out really pretty. One last thing for the eyes, we can't forget a small white ball of fondant to look like a sparkle in his eyes. Okay, let's put the eyes into place. I've already attached the whites. I brush a little edible glue onto the whites and I put his pretty blue eyes into place. Now I'm using a little brown food coloring gel to paint a line around the top of his eyes. Next up is the mask. I use my template again to cut it out. I did let it dry for about an hour or so before I moved it onto the cake just to make sure it held its shape while I moved it. And here I'm attaching it with a little bit of edible glue. Moving on to the mouth. I brush the inside of the mouth with some edible glue and I press a thin piece of pink fondant inside it. And then I use my X-Acto knife to cut away the excess. Jack-Jack does not have any teeth on the top, but he does have gums, so I'm attaching a small strip of pink fondant on the top. Then I'm attaching two small teeth on the bottom. He's starting to look so cute now. Next, I'm dusting a little bit of pink food coloring dust on his cheeks. I'm pretty happy with his face so far, so now I'm going to move on to his body. First, I'm misting the cake with water, and I'm removing the plastic wrap because we don't really need that anymore and then I begin covering the body in panels of fondant. I'm not too worried about the seams on his body, which is why I'm going with all fondant here. For the feet, I'm pulling the ends of my fondant together and I'm using my scissors to cut away the excess. I know that I'm covering the bottom of his feet in black circles, so this is where I want to hide the seam. Okay, next I'm making some wrinkles in a super suit using a modeling tool. 
Now that I've got his entire body covered, I'm going to add a few black fondant details. The bottom of his feet are getting some black fondant circles, and I'm adding logs of black fondant around his wrists and neck, and those I'm attaching with edible glue. Next up are the ears. Since I want his ears to be a little thick and completely hold their shape, I need to use modeling chocolate. I'm using another template so that I can get the exact shape of the ear, and I'm cutting them out with my X-Acto knife. I round out the edges with my hands, and I give it some more details with my ball tool. To get these to stay on the cake, I'm brushing some toothpicks with edible glue, and I'm sticking those into the ear, and then I gently push them into the cake. Okay, next up are the hands. I'm using modeling chocolate for these two. This brand of modeling chocolate that I'm using is called Hot Hands. First, I roll the modeling chocolate out into a triangle shape, and then I begin cutting the fingers. I'm leaving out the thumb for now, and I begin shaping the four fingers. Next, I roll out a log of modeling chocolate for the thumb, and I press it into the hand. It just sticks to itself, no edible glue needed. I got these new sugar shapers, and this one is perfect for making a fingernail shape. Just continue using your own hand as a model to shape Jack-Jack's hand. My armature wire wasn't exactly long enough, so I inserted some lollipop sticks into the arms to help support the hands. One last detail to model, the hair. This is another piece of modeling chocolate that I'm molding into the hair shape. I'm using another sugar shaper to make the lines in it to look like hair. And then I'm attaching it to the cake. The final touch to this cake will be a tiny bit of airbrushing. I really want to give it some shadowing, so I'm airbrushing dark red around the bottom edges of the cake, the seams, and the wrinkles on his super suit. And I'm also airbrushing a tiny bit of flesh tone mixed with white inside his ears and under his chin. Thank you so much for watching my cake decorating video. If you learned anything at all, will you please go down and hit the subscribe button? Also, if you're on social media, please go check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.